Today, we are comparing the new 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Platinum to the 2024 Subaru Ascent Touring. The three-row family crossover segment has always been one of the most competitive segments in the auto industry, and the Subaru Ascent has always had a good reputation for a large third row, a good amount of space in the cargo area, and a tech-rich interior. But Toyota hasn't forgotten about their Highlander and its small third row, so they released a whole new vehicle in the form of the Grand Highlander. So which of these turbocharged four-cylinder powered vehicles is the right one for you? That's what we're going to find out in today's video, so stay tuned to the very end. First, let's start out with trim levels. I have selected the top trim levels in the lineup for both of these vehicles. That would be the Platinum for the Grand Highlander and the Touring for the Ascent. The Grand Highlander Platinum comes in a hybrid powertrain and a gas engine, and we have the gas motor today, coming in at around $56,000. The Ascent has one powertrain, and that is a turbocharged 4-cylinder engine, so that is ringing in at about $51,000. So let's see what you get for the money. Starting out with the styling, both cars have their brand's latest design language and a pretty boxy look up front. The Grand Highlander has a chrome strip that runs along the top of everything and a full blacked out grille down below. Everything in the Grand Highlander will be fully functional. Moving on to the Ascent, this definitely has a more rugged and off-road-like appearance. There is a full blacked out grille up front and a chrome strip that goes all the way across the front. There is a large Subaru logo that splits the chrome and all of the openings will be functional except for the ones directly underneath the headlights. Moving on to the headlights, the Grand Highlander will have a full LED design with fog lights down below and a projector style LED headlamp. The turn signal, of course, will be LED. The Ascent, on the other hand, will have a mostly LED headlight design with a projector-style headlamp and fog lights down below. However, the turn signal will be incandescent, giving the Grand Highlander 0.5 points for full LED lighting. When it comes to the wheels, both cars will offer 20-inch alloy wheels. However, the Grand Highlander's wheels are covered in a chrome hubcap, which makes it look a lot uglier, and it just is unnecessary. The brushed aluminum on the standard Highlander's wheels are so much better. The Ascent has a more rugged and off-road appearance when it comes to the wheels, and this same wheel can be found on the Onyx Edition. At least this one doesn't have a chrome hubcap. Now let's take a look at the side. The Grand Highlander will have a chrome strip that runs along the bottom, and mirrors that will be fully loaded including heating, blind spot monitoring, auto dimming, and power folding. Taking a look at the Ascent, we have more of a boxy design, and we have chrome that runs along the top and the bottom of the windows. We also will have the optional body side moldings on today's tester. The mirrors will also be fully loaded with heating, blind spot monitoring, auto dimming, and power folding. Taking a look at the back, the Grand Highlander will have the painted Grand Highlander badge, and you also get a brake light that goes all the way across the top. The Ascent, on the other hand, will have a chrome strip that runs across that area where the Grand Highlander badge would be, and the Grand Highlander does not offer a chrome bumper protector like the Ascent does. Taking a look at the lighting, the Grand Highlander will offer full LED taillights across the lineup. And I do have to say, the top brake light going all the way across looks a lot more premium than the standard brake light on the Ascent. Speaking of the Ascent, this will have a mostly incandescent taillight design, including an incandescent reverse light, an incandescent turn signal, and a full LED brake light. When it comes to the interior, these two couldn't have been more different than they already are. Starting out with the Grand Highlander, the door panel will be made of soft touch plastic along the top, full open pour wood trim, two person memory seats, leather on your armrest, all of your switch gear, and a lot of storage down below. Coming to the SM, this is already so much different than the Grand Highlander. The top part will be made of soft touch plastic, but that's the only similar thing they have. You have real open pour wood trim and extensive leather throughout the upper part of the door panel. All of your switch gear will be located in the traditional place, and you will have some door storage down below. However, the Grand Highlander has a lot more door storage, and it will definitely take the wind in that area. 
Moving on to the seats, the Grand Howinger will offer three different color options, including this gray leather that we have here. It will be made of perforated leather and will have a gray accent across the top. This will also be 10-way power adjusting. The Ascent fights back to the Grand Howinger with premium Napa leather seats with 12-way power adjusting over 10 and a 2-way manual thigh extension. Both cars will also offer heated leather-wrapped steering wheels. Moving on to the gauges, the Ascent will have two analog gauge clusters with a tiny digital display in the middle. You probably have already seen this, but the Grand Howinger does offer a full digital display with Toyota's newest design. It also will change graphics when you enter different drive modes. When it comes to materials, the Grand in Grand Howinger doesn't mean grand when it comes to materials. You have plastic on the passenger side, some leather at to rest your knee against, glossy plastic by the shifter, more plastic along the center console, and some faux wood trim. Subaru declares that they can do better with soft touch plastic along the upper dash, leatherette in the more accessible areas, aluminum around the touchscreen, and some open pore wood trim by the center console. And this is real open pore wood trim, unlike the faux wood trim in the Grand Howinger. Let's take a look at storage because this is very, very important when it comes to a family three row crossover. Both will have large center consoles with an extra tray for a wallet or some keys. The Ascents will be felt lines, but the Grand Howinger comes standard with a wireless charger. For the Ascents, it's an optional add-on. Both will offer passenger side cubbies with the Grand Howinger having a separate USB port in that area, and the Ascent will have another cubby by the driver's side. We haven't really seen the Grand Howinger storage area, so let's take a look at that. You will have a larger center console and a larger separate tray for the Grand Howinger. And it slides, so you still have a little bit of an armrest if you slide it back. Both cars excel in this area, offering more than enough storage than needed. But I will have to give the edge to the Grand Howinger for having that larger center console. When it comes to the climate controls, both vehicles offer three zones of automatic climate control. They also offer three stages of heated and ventilated seats. The real difference is that the Grand Howinder uses real physical buttons and knobs with the option to use the screen, while the Ascent has a hybrid of physical and digital buttons. Moving on to the infotainment system, both cars are using their brand's latest software and designs. The Grand Howinder has the latest 12.3 inch audio multimedia display, which is very quick and responsive. Taking a look at the Ascent, we have the latest Subaru Starlink infotainment system built into an 11.6 inch portrait style touchscreen. This, like the Grand Howinger, has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a wireless Wi Fi hotspot. You also get Cabin Connect so you can communicate to the passengers in the second and third row. Toyota also offers this, but it's in the form of Driver Easy Speak. I do have to say that the Grand Howinger's infotainment system is a lot quicker and seems a lot more high-tech than the Ascents. Taking a look at the cameras, both vehicles offer full 360-degree backup cameras with active trajectory. The Grand Howinger lets you choose what the lines look like, and it also gives you a rear camera washer in case you live on a dirt road. The portrait-style infotainment system in the Ascent makes it a little bit harder to fit a full 360 camera in there, but they do it anyway. You also will get active trajectory, and you also get a demonstration of the rear parking sensors. I think that's a great way to fill in the extra space that's not needed. This is a good time to mention that both cars use traditional manual gear selectors, which you know people like a lot more than those finicky electronic ones. Up top, both cars will offer a traditional rearview mirror, a digital rearview mirror, and the Ascent even has a compass built into it. You also will get a large panoramic sunroof up top that stretches all the way back to the second row. Taking a look at the rear seats, this is a very important part in a three-row crossover and Subaru and Toyota know that very well. The seats are very comfortable and they both slide and recline, but the Grand Howingers are heated and ventilated while the Ascents are just heated. Taking a look at the door panel, the Grand Howinger will offer the same leather armrest, the window switch, and a sunshade for the rear seat passengers. You also get a lot more storage in the door pocket than the Ascent. 
To be fair, we're also going to take a look at the ascents. We have a lot of good amenities back here, and it is also very comfortable. There is one thing that the Grand Highlander can't match, and that is the fact that this ascent has 19 cup holders throughout the whole cabin. That is class fleeting, and the Grand Highlander also has a good number at 16. You also get extensive weather, sunshades, and open pore wood trim, and these seats will be finished in Napa weather, making them extremely comfortable. Both cars have a good amount of room in the second row, and even with the seats slid almost all the way back, I still have about 4 inches of legroom in the Grand Highlander, so I'm going to give the slight edge to the Grand Highlander. But the Ascent has a little bit bigger of a seatback pocket, and I've noticed that Toyota is going a little bit smaller for the pockets. You also get two USB-C ports and a household style outlet. Both cars will also have a third zone of climate control with all of your controls like you do up front, and the Ascent has extra cup holders that will fold out. The Grand Highlander also has center cup holders and two cubbies for the second row passengers and an extra one for the third row passengers. I will give a half point to the Grand Highlander for having the extra cubbies, but the cup holder placement is based on your personal preference. The third rows are just as important as the second rows if you are carrying extra people around. Thankfully, Subaru and Toyota did an amazing job on the third rows. Access is very easy in the Grand Highlander, you can pull that lever or you can pull the latch at the top of the seat. The Ascent has the option to pull the lever at the bottom of the seat or you can pull the latch on the side of the seat for the third row passengers getting out of the car. Both cars offer a good amount of space to get into the third row, and when sliding the seat all the way back, I don't have any legroom in the back of this ascent. Now keep in mind this is all the way back, so you're going to most likely have it slid forward a little bit. Comparing that to the Grand Highlander, I still get an inch and a half of legroom even with the seat slid all the way back. The thigh support is also better. The Grand Highlander offers 4 cup holders in the back while the Ascent offers 5, however, the Grand Highlander has a handle so that getting in and out of the third row is much easier. The leather armrest in the Grand Highlander is more comfortable, but there is an extra cubby in the Ascent which makes it a little bit more versatile. You also will get 2 USB ports on one side in the Ascent and 1 USB port on each side for the Grand Highlander. Both cars offer good third rows with a good amount of space and amenities, but I am going to have to give the edge to the Grand Highlander for having that extra bit of room. Coming to the cargo area, if you're going to have a lot of people with you, you're going to have a lot of stuff. Thankfully, Toyota and Subaru have you covered. Behind the third row of the Grand Highlander, you're going to get 20.6 cubic feet of cargo room. This will exceed the ascents, coming in at 17.8 cubic feet behind the third row. When you fold down the third row, you're going to get 58 cubic feet in the Grand Highlander, while the ascent offers 43.8. Finally, with all the rows folded, the Grand Highlander will offer 97.5 cubic feet of cargo room, while the ascent will offer 75.8. Both are very good, but they also have great amenities back here. They will have standard cargo trays with the option for the Ascent to go onto the third row and the second row, and the Grand Highlander also has a Velcro first aid kit. You will also get in both a power source and a subwoofer in the back. Taking a look at the powertrains, I mentioned in the intro that both of these are powered by 2.4 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engines. But it's the Grand Highlander that has two other hybrid powertrains. You have a performance hybrid making 362 horsepower and a traditional hybrid making about 243 horsepower. This one today is the traditional 2.4 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engine making 265 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. This is all mated to an 8 speed automatic transmission and gets a pretty good 21 miles per gallon in the city, 27 on the highway, and 24 combined.
And there you have it, up to 75 miles per hour in this 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Platinum. Continuing on what we were saying about the powertrain, the Grand Highlander is very smooth and refined regardless of the powertrain you get. This base powertrain is a little bit cheaper than the Grand Highlander Hybrid Max, and that starts at about $58,000 compared to about fifty-four dollars in this regular model. Let's take a look at the Ascent and see what that has to offer. The Ascent is powered by a 2.4-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine, just like the Grand Highlander, making 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. This is all mated to a CVT transmission that imitates an 8-speed automatic. People think that it is an automatic transmission since you can't feel the shifts, but I can assure you that it is a CVT. This does get a very good 20 miles per gallon in the city, 26 on the highway, and 23 combined. While that isn't class leading, it is actually pretty commendable for what you get in a large three-row crossover. Let's take a look at an acceleration clip. Alright, there we go, up to 80 miles per hour in this 2024 Subaru Ascent Touring. The Ascent is actually pretty quick considering it only has 260 horsepower under the hood, but I won't say it's fast because the Grand Highlander is definitely quicker and 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds for this Ascent is not fast. While we're braking, I have to mention that the brakes are pretty good in this ascent, and you can see in the center display in the gauge cluster that when the brake pedal is pushed down, you can see the brake lights illuminating on the car itself. That is a small but noticeable feature. The Grand Highlander is a little bit smoother, and the ride quality is a little bit better in that because they updated the chassis more recently, so that is going to soak up a little bit more of the bumps. Both cars are very smooth, but I'm just saying that the Grand Highlander has the slight edge if you want the maximum amount of smoothness without going with a luxury SUV. About the wind noise, it actually is a little bit more reduced than I expected. I thought that luxury cars should have that kind of wind noise, but these cars are pretty impressive with the amount of sound they let in. Of course, it's still going to let in a little bit of noise. They both have 20-inch alloy wheels, so that is not going to help with reducing the wind noise at all. The Grand Highlander is the bigger one of the two, measuring in at 201 inches in length, while the Ascent is only 197 inches, and it is also wider, measuring in at 78 inches, while the Ascent is only 77 inches wide. Well, there you have it, the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Platinum is the winner of this comparison. Overall, you have more versatility and more space in all three rows. You also get an almost class-leading 97.5 cubic feet of cargo room with all the rows folded. This is basically as close as minivan versatility as you can get in a crossover, and there are good reasons why this is the class-leading three-row crossover in this segment. Toyota did an amazing job on this Grand Highlander, but we can't forget about the Ascent either. The Ascent didn't win this comparison, but it can't be forgotten either. This has a very comfortable driving experience, Napa leather seating across all three rows, and a good amount of space in the third row and the cargo area considering its size. This is probably a little bit easier to drive than the Grand Highlander considering that it is smaller, and it probably will fit in your garage a little bit better. You also can't forget that this is almost $10,000 less expensive starting than the Grand Highlander. Which one would you choose? Comment your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.